everybody, it's Minute Beyond. Welcome back to more Pokemon 2. In the last episode, or rather in the last day of exploration, like I'm trying to get into the swing of Saiyan, we went to the perplexing pool, a new area, and we reunited with an old friend, the yellow Pikmin Lucy. And in this episode, now that we have her with us, we could do a buttload more stuff in the Awakening Wood. So we're going to be returning there, and then we will be a heck of a lot stronger, as you will see. Alright then, Awakening Wood, we kind of had a salty finish with this place last time. That's a very weird way of warning it, a salty finish. It was not the best of endings when we were last here. We unfortunately had to come back here just to get that one uh, treasure that allowed us to go to the to the perplexing pool, which I did not like, but them's the breaks, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to want to go ahead and get, let's say, ten or nine. Let's get ten Lennies out. Tenny Lenny. Uh, we don't need a whole team of 100 right now, and even if we did, we can't get them because, as we found out last time we were here, there seem to be some roaming Pikmin that are not in our possession here, so hopefully we can find them today and they'll be able to help us out. Oh, I don't want to keep getting uh, one less than I actually want, but whatever. Let's go and get these guys, and then we're going to want to make a buttload of them Lucy because Lucy is going to be very, very helpful today, as we have just talked about, because she opens up a lot of stuff in the Awakening Wood. Alright then, let's get things started, y'all, son, I don't know, it's been really weird, it's been a while since I recorded, and it's actually my second time recording this episode because, I don't know why, but it was just like, commentary diarrhea that was coming out of me, it was just really bad. Alright, let's get these two cheer grubs, and hopefully things should go a lot smoother, now that I'm back into the swing of things with Pikmin, I'm just so stinking happy to be playing this game, like, I, I don't know, I just like, fell in love with this game all over again, this is a game that's like, very great for replayability because of how the dungeons are always randomized it just makes it really good for that sort of thing be, to be to never get boring basically but also i don't know i just really need a big change of pace because i was playing pokemon for like way too long and i like how now that i'm finished with emerald i i am playing pokemon in my free time right now uh they just released the update to pokemon sun and moon where you could uh transfer pokemon from past games over to sun and moon because apparently they needed Pokemon Bank for it, even though it's been free for every other uh, Pokemon game series in the past. Which is sort of lame, but just five bucks for a year's membership, so I guess not terrible, I guess. So I went ahead and I transferred all my Pokemon over to Sun and Moon. I still have my original teams from my first playthroughs of every Pokemon game over the years, except for Crystal, because that can't get transferred. But it got immortalized in the LP, so that's nice, I guess. So yeah, I went ahead and transferred them over and I just like have been re-experiencing those teams. Some of them are really awesome, I really missed them. Other ones, not so awesome and I kinda just, I don't know why I'm keeping them around with me, but whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and throw all these Lucy's here because we're gonna wanna have them destroy that electric fence. I may or may not have mentioned in the last episode that Lucy could destroy or is impervious to electricity, so be sure to be aware of that, I guess. <laughs> In the first game, there was no electric hazards, so that wasn't really a big whole thing that we knew about. But now it's a very big whole thing that we know about. So, yeah. But whatever, we're gonna stop talking about Lucy and instead talk about another sort of Pikmin. One that has been in the background this entire time and you probably already know about it, but whatever, we're gonna start talking about right now! Look who it is! Oh, I'm so proud of them destroying Wallywogs at such a young age. I like how they keep jumping on top of them. Look there! Wild blue Pikmin are chasing prey near the water's edge! Per- perhaps, that was like per may. Perhaps by observing these wild specimens, we can understand more about their true nature. Uh, we unfortunately don't have time for that because time limits. Cause Dane, I apologize, I was momentarily entranced by them. Now, back to work. Okay then, the ship is having like a moment, I don't know if that was like his way of crying or something, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna want to separate these guys because I do not trust Chuck to just stay put and like let me throw Lucy over here to the gates because then they'll just be all like, oh hey, let's go ahead and just and touch the electricity because it's nice. Okay, I don't know what that was. It is the latest treasure that we got. Thanks to Lucy being able to be thrown very high, we were able to get Carmex. Healing cask. I kind of wish it was like 129 Pokos because there's like a dollar twenty-nine of Carmex right here. Maybe there could be like a game theory who could convert Pokos to real money because of this or something. I don't know, whatever. Uh, whatever. I'm not going to be talking about that right now. Let's go and get Chuck over here and then I don't know what the heck Louie's going to be doing today. I guess we could go explore this area. 
Not sure what. It, oh, hey, look at that poison gate right there. All right, I guess that's a thing for Louie to be doing. Probably should have gotten more Lenny's up. I actually kind of forgot that this was here. But whatever. Uh, can we get that Chuck out? Yep, all right. Like, it was just pops out of them and stuff. Let's go ahead and separate. And Lo 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 Louie will take Lenny and start working on this thing. Okay, dismiss, thank you. Uh, Lenny, really? Please, just cooperate. All right, there you go. Olimar, how you doing? That thing breaking down. And these guys could go, I guess we could grind up on some berries while we're at it. And we can also get that one Chuck that's back at base. All right, just gonna have to walk all the way over here and stuff. All right then, berry time. Berry time, berry time, grab all the berries and have a good time or whatever. I feel like I say that song all the time, just like I always repeat jokes in my LPs, but like I never have something to say, just like all my LPs whenever I speak or whatever. Enough stinking beating down on myself, let's just go ahead and do stuff, I guess, all right. Uh, once we have that final Pikmin species with us, and yes, that is the final Pikmin species, uh, there will be a lot more to talk about since we'll be able to start going have access to everything. Yeah, basically everything. Uh, hey, you guys are done. Good job. Uh, I guess eh, I'm going to want to leave that for the new Pikmin because you guys don't need it too much. But whatever. Now that that gate's breaking down, let's go ahead and reunite with the entire Pikmin family. He just stopped moving, he didn't blink or anything, it was sort of weird. At last, you have encountered them. They seem to have gill-like ducks on their cheeks. They must be blue Pikmin, like the other types, they look to you for direction. While they are indeed surviving naturally, they still seem to long for a valiant leader. All right then, the blue Pikmin, who I ever so lovingly refer to as Bob. They are uh, waterproof, as you can see. They're the only Pikmin that can survive in the water. They don't really have any special abilities in battle. I don't know why, like, Bob is like a weird type of Pikmin to me. It's not the most useful in battle, like I said, because it doesn't have any special abilities. There are some water enemies in this game that they're good at fighting against, but none of them are like required of you to use Bob. I don't know, I know Bob is super useful because water is a hazard that no other Pikmin could even get across and stuff. But I don't know, I just sort of don't uh, tend to think of Bob as super useful, but he is. He's a really good Pikmin. Definitely more useful than Steve, but I just don't tend to think about it. Alright then, so now that we have the whole Pikmin team back together again, uh, for this game at least, <laughs> we could go ahead and start grinding up all of our Pikmin types, as well as having access to everything, like I said before. Uh, we're gonna need to put some Pikmin away, actually, because Bob's the only one who can reach that treasure. Though I'm pretty sure, uh, five Bob's is more than enough for that empty paint, uh, squirter thing. Container. I don't even know what you'd call that. Alright, uh, that Chuck trying to get the berries. Alright, come on, guys. You're standing right next to it. Come on. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys away who are just standing here at base so that all the markets start taking out more Bob's. And I think that'll be a good way to do things. Alright. I'm not really sure what dungeon I'm going to be tackling, probably the ones that the Lennies are working on, because that one is, if I remember correctly, the least evil of the two. Uh, these guys' wog pulls, they're baby wallywogs basically, because tadpoles turn into frogs, and so on. Yeah, we need ten actually, alright, so it was a good thing I put them away. They are basically baby wallywogs, they can't hurt you in the slightest, because they're just a bunch of little tadpole things that can't do anything. So, they're not really threatening in the slightest. You could go ahead and have the Bobs attack them for, uh, to get them to the Onion, but it's not really worth it. I don't think they give that much and they just run away so quickly, so I'm just going to ignore them for now. So, what we're going to do instead is, actually we kind of need more Bobs in order to bring that other dude over here. So, how's about we destroy them instead? I think it, the best strategy would be to have Olimar attack them. What the fruit? Okay, so the one thing they can do is they can flop your Pikmin over and interrupt them while they're trying to carry something back. You want to play dirty, son? I'll play dirty with you. All right, whatever. I don't have time for that, I know. So let's just go ahead and put all of them on that. And I guess that's unfortunately all I can do. Louie, what are you doing? Absolutely nothing. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess Bob could do some stuff over here as well, so it's good that we're bringing all of them back there. You guys are being completely useless right now. Let's go and grab you. And I guess you could keep working on the berries. I don't really think we need that much, but I guess why the heck not. Uh, let's bring out more Lennies and see if they still need help on that wall, because they probably do. 
Let's get the nine. There's Harry on the field. Great. Oh boy. You guys can work on that berry plant and then I will go ahead and check to see how the Lennies are doing. They're probably working on it, but whatever. Oh, guys, don't follow me. Oh, I'm sorry. Just don't. Let's see, go through here. Now, you may notice that this place looks very similar or familiar to something that we've experienced in the past. Like this area right here, it has like a little path of water in that area that opens up to this little dead end cave entrance thingy. All seems sort of, uh, I was trying to say similar and familiar all at the same time. Seems very familiar to something we've seen in the past. Well, the reason for that is because this is a place we've seen in the past. This is the Forest of Hope from Pikmin 1. And that's really interesting that we return here. I don't really consider it to be lazy on the game developer's parts because A, it makes it look like a, compl a completely new area. First time playing this game and first couple playthroughs actually, I didn't even realize that this was a new area. Or I didn't realize it was an old area that was just reskinned. But there are some new areas that are opened up to us, different hazards and enemies and everything like that. It's just really cool how the environment changed so drastically since we were last here. I don't know how long it takes to get from this place to Planet Hakate, but it doesn't seem like a long enough time to the point where it changed so drastically. But it did. And we got decorative goo. Mario paint, her <laughs> her. Alright, how ironic we got blue paint near them. Uh, hey, 40% of the dead is being recovered. Awesome possum, cherry blossom. And hey, cherry blossom, the cherry blossom falling from the sky. Um, uh, no, you can't get any more on there. Okay, fine. Just go ahead and grab the other guys. And let's have Bob start working on this wall. Actually, no, Bob does not need to work on this wall on his own. Because if you could see, not over here, Steve. Go over here. All right, as you can see, there is a pile of rock rubble right here, and this is actually blocking up, or rather clogging up, a drain hole that this water could go down. So as soon as, as yeah, I don't want to keep you being tongue tied today. As soon as Bob gets rid of this rock rubble, which I like saying like that, it's like rock rubble, rock rubble, rock rubble, it's like rada 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 rada. Uh, there you go. It's more toilet paper. I don't know. And wow, the ship wasn't all like, amazing, the pick one were able to unclog a hole by smashing the wrong. What an amazing discovery. Olimar, why have you not told Louie about this? You must be slack slacking on the job or something like that. I don't know. All right, we got 90 guys right here. The others are over on the poison fence wall thing. I'm going to have Olimar stay with these guys, and Louie can go and see what the Lennies are doing. Hopefully they're done by now. And wow, the day went by a lot quicker than I remember it would. Uh, I guess I'm just spoiled since I spent so much time in those dungeons that have no time limit. It's just sort of weird to see how quickly this one's going by. And yeah, you guys have totally taken care of this wall. Good job. Alright, now what's on the other side is the question. Uh, oh, hey. Okay, then. So we come full circle. Uh, then I guess we didn't really need to get rid of this wall because it just led to this area. It's just a matter of which way you want to go about getting to this area. So, yeah, I guess we could put you guys away, and we could try to grind a bob some more with some of these corpses that are lying around still. And as you can see, that electric fence that's over there, it does lead to another dungeon. So, if we could get in there before the end of the day, that will be very, very good. Very good, indeed. So, let's go ahead and put Lenny away so we could get out more bobs. Alright, then. And how much... Okay, good, you guys are done. Now we're going to go and separate everyone, and we're going to have Lucy work on that wall while we have Bob uh, repopulate himself, I guess. And then we'll see what we can do after that. Alright, so we're going to bring you up here. Can turn you around, and hey, there's a dice up here. It's another treasure that I didn't even remember. Something I just love about not researching games before LPing them. Um, even though it might make the commentary more smooth to actually do research and stuff, I just like being surprised about everything. I know this isn't, and this is also a game where like I don't really need to do that because uh, uh, the underground dungeon parts get randomized every time you play it. But still, it's just fun to just not know what you're gonna experience going into a dungeon and, and just to uh, be surprised about a game that you know you love and just fall in love with it all over again. Really fun. So now that's taken care of, I'm gonna put Steve away. Uh, we probably don't need to put that many away, but whatever. We're gonna put Steve away and then we'll take the bobs over to their onion and see where we can go from there. Of course, a Chuck joins us. I don't know what's wrong with this dismissing process so far. They just all like to hang out with me and stuff. Uh, I guess I'm just so darn likable, me and my big-nosed handsomeness. 
Alright, we're gonna play some Mario Party with this or something like that. Chance Totem. Actually, no. Using a six-sided dice is how you play the boring, crummy Mario Parties. We use a ten-sided dice for cool Mario Parties that are actually good and worth your time. And whatever. Just a little jab at Nintendo right there, as I like to do oh so much, even though I try to like them. Or rather, I like old Nintendo. Middle school Nintendo? GameCube and Wii are, it's sort of old school nowadays, but it's not like old, old school. Can we have a middle school now because of uh, the way games have evolved over time? I don't know. Whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and get some more bobs out so they could go and destroy these uh, wog poles. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's not really worth it because they just run around way too fast. Uh, Louie, what are you doing? They're still working on the wall. Alright then. Uh, I guess we could have them try and get these berries, but I don't really care to do that, so... Uh, as soon as we get this thing over here, then I'll be sort of satisfied with what we've done. Okay, we're running out of time. Oh boy. Uh, can we get some of you? And we're gonna see if we can get some more bobs super quickly. I know you need to have both captains with you when going into a dungeon, otherwise they won't just bring all the Pikmin that they collectively have to a new dungeon. Which is really stinking dumb, but whatever. I see what this dungeon has. No, I cannot. Alright, let's go over here. I don't think we're gonna make it, unfortunately. Great! I don't know what it is with the Awakening Wood and just being bad for progress, but whatever. Alright, let's unplug these guys. Oh, yeah, we're totally not gonna make it. Unless we could just somehow survive with 50 Lucys or something, I don't think it's happening. Alright, you guys are good. Louie, they're not even done with the wall yet. Yeah, this ain't happening. Alright, we at least got Bob with us, so we'll have a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow. And let's look at this dungeon so we can know what to go in with. Next time, I suppose. So, you have at last reached the higher ground. Congratulations are in order. Wait, what is this? My seismic sensors are picking up tremors deep below. What force is at work in the depths of this planet? Uh, sensing tremors, eh? Hmm. We have the Bulblax Kingdom. Only need Steve and Lucy, so that's really unfortunate that we don't even need Bob with us, but no. Uh, three seconds is not enough time to get everyone rounded up. So unfortunately, we're just gonna have to call it quits for today. All right then, we got Bob, so I guess that's a very good victory in some regard. But whatever, we're done here. And wait, I just realized if you end the day with Louie in your control, then that means Louie gets to hit, sit in the first seat. How dare- oh, wait, is he? Yeah, he is. How dare you sit in my seat, Louie? You'd expect me, the great and almighty Olimar, to sit in the back? The nerve of you. Alright, whatever. You can have your little victory just this once, Louie. Don't get used to it. Alright, today's report. I'm surprised I never made a morning report reference, but then it gets at night when we make this report, so I guess we can't really do it. How lame. Alright, we got ourselves 120 Steves, 74 Lucys, 28 Bobs, 19 Lennies, 30 Chucks. Not too bad. Alright, haven't lost any Pikmin yet, aside from the four from last time, so I guess we have lost Pikmin, but whatever. We didn't have any new losses today, so that's nice. I just took a call from my loan agent! He has the scariest voice I've ever heard! While you two are dwaddling about, my life hangs by a thread! Get to work, slackers! Uh, the president, I love stinking emails. I wonder if, like, his, uh, loan agent guy is, like, Reggie or something. He has the most scary voice ever. I don't know, it seems like that. Alright then, we had a completely above day exploration day, uh, keeping it old school I see in the world of Pikmin 2, even though it's Pikmin 1 in more ways than 1 because we discovered that's the same area as Pikmin 1, but we're in Pikmin 2. Okay, whatever, we're current commentators, the commentary's getting crummy, I can't speak. It's a sign that we need to stop talking right now, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Next time on Pikmin 2, we're gonna return to the Awakening Wood once again, so we could go and enter the Bow Black's Kingdom. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.